Hello, friends, and welcome to Coffee and Conversation. Rays of Hope, coming from the Gordon Avenue Baptist Church in Adel, Georgia. And, friend, there's just not a better place to find a ray of hope than in the light of God's holy and precious Word. Today, let me invite you to pick up your copy of God's Word. Turn with me over to uh, the book of Romans. Romans chapter number 8, I want us to look at verse number 29 as our text verse of Scripture. And get that good fresh cup of hot coffee. Hey, let's have an encounter with God and His precious Word as we enjoy our coffee together today. Well, amen. There's just not a better way to start a brand new day than a fresh cup of hot coffee and digging into the truth of God's precious Word. Well, the Bible says over here in Romans 8, 29, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son our text, to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And I pray that uh, God would add his blessings to the reading of his holy and precious word today. Well, friend, uh, today I want to bring to you a thought that I've titled, God Must Make the Changes, or God Makes the Changes. You know, as we deal with people from day to day and we try to point people to the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, one of the things that I hear more often than anything else is, well, whenever I can make a change, I'll come to the Lord. Or whenever I can start living a little bit better, I'll come to the Lord. Well, friend, I wish that I could tell you that uh, it works that way, but it really doesn't. To, because Jesus wants you to come just as you are, and then he'll begin to conform you into what you ought to be. He makes the transformation. You can't make the transformation. You know, throughout your Christian life, God will work to make you what you ought to be. I love the little children's song, He's Still Working on Me to Make Me What I Ought to Be. Uh, because I just hadn't arrived yet. I've been preaching the gospel for 40 years. But friend, I just hadn't arrived yet. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Now one day I'll graduate. But uh, right now he's still working on me. So throughout your walk as a Christian, God will conform you to the image of his son. He'll work on you. Have you ever stopped to think about that, what uh, conformity really means? When you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend, listen. When you receive him, he takes you just like you are. Uh, he takes you just like you are, and he takes up residence in your heart. And there are many things in your life that actually work against his image in you. We have that old sinful nature. So we grow in our relationship with the Lord. And he refines our lives and uh, it reflects him. Uh, you get to be more like a mirror than anything else. You want to reflect him. You want to reflect his image. You want to reflect the Lord's character. And you want to reflect the Lord's likeness. Now in this process... Is, uh, it's much like art, uh, the art of sculpturing. When he set out to produce uh, his famous statue of David, Michelangelo uh, chose a discarded piece of stone. Later, when he was asked how he had managed to carve the masterpiece from the slab of white marble, the artist replied that he did not carve David, rather he saw David in that piece of stone. And with the tools he had, he simply let him out. Now, that's what God's doing in our lives. He works through our adversity 
to let Jesus out. There's not anything that you ever go through in this life that God doesn't use for his glory. Friend, he lets Jesus out through those troubled times that you go through from time to time. So whenever you find yourself in the midst of troubled times, just say, well, the Lord's carving. He's working on me just a little bit more. So consider what God is chipping away at in your life. And ask him to reveal those things and request the strength uh, to surrender uh, your rough edges to him so that he can make you into what you ought to be. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. And I'm so thankful that we serve a God that's able to conform us into his own image. Now, transformation took place the day I got saved. And then confirmation or conforming to his image, it continues to go day by day as God continues to work on me to make me more like Jesus, to make me more reflect the image of Jesus. I tell people all the time, the greatest desire that I have in my heart is that God would empty me just a little bit more myself every day so there'll be room for more Jesus. I want to reflect his image. I want to reflect his character. I want to reflect his likeness so that people will see Jesus, not Danny, Jesus. And friend, that's exactly what he wants to do in our lives. God bless you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this powerful devotion. And God, we ask that you'll use it now for your glory. Help us yield ourselves to you so that you can make us into what we ought to be. Too many times, Lord, we're too busy trying to make ourselves into what we want to be. But God, help us surrender ourselves completely to you so that you can make us into what you want us to be. And as you work and chip away and make us into what we ought to be, May, O oh Lord, we reflect your image, your likeness, so that people will be able to see Jesus. For it's in his name I pray. Amen. Well, friend, I pray the devotion's been a blessing to you today. Uh, what a reminder that God has uh, given the old preacher today that, hey, I hadn't arrived just yet. He's still chipping away to make me what I ought to be. And I pray that, uh, friend, uh, you'll let him work on you just a little bit, too. And as he works on you and conforms you into the image of Jesus, reflect Jesus today. Your life could be the only Bible some will ever read. So let others see and hear Jesus in all you say and in all that you do. Have a great day.